Hello all, a very good morning to you. So today I would like to discuss you regarding the another disease condition that is called as hyatid disease. So it is from community health nursing. So mainly we will touch regarding the epidemiology of the disease. So coming to the topic here, this hyatid disease. This is a disease which is mainly caused due to the two types of organisms. So first one is Echinococcus granulosus and Echinococcus multilocularis. So these are the two organisms which are responsible for this disease, hyatid disease. And if you see here, it is occurring throughout the world. It can occur throughout the world and Maplestone and Sami, they are the one who has reported regarding the endemic nature of this hyatidosis. So, coming to the topic here, they have described that the high frequency of human and animal infections. So, they are occurring in the southwestern Punjab. Means, if you see in India, they are occurring mainly in the southwestern Punjab. And in the year 1968, Mr. Reddy Eatel, he reviewed about 527 cases of this hyatid disease which had been observed in the India. If you see the highest prevalence rate, so the states uh, Andhra Pradesh and Madras, these two are having the high highest prevalence rate. Endemacy rate of this hyotidosis in or around Delhi and New Delhi and Western uh, West India, Northwest India, it was mainly described by Mr. Pra Reddy Prakash Etel. So, coming to the worldwide distribution here. So, you can see here, this is how according to the 2011 census that is from World Health Organization. So, these are the highest endemic areas. So, if you see uh, at present, these are the, uh, these uh, bright red indicates the highest endemic areas and this light red it is indicating the present situation and these are the suspected areas. So, this is the WHO map according to 2011 census. This disease hyatid. So, it is a public health problem which is present in Asia, which is present in Mediterranean countries and which is present in South America, Africa mainly with the immigration. And if you see in the countries like Europe and North America, so in recent years they have seen some increase in the disease prevalence. So, so, coming to the agent factors here, what is the causative, causative agent? Here it is the larval stage of the tapeworm that is which is coming from the dogs or the sheep and coming to the mode of transmission see here the mode of transmission is mainly from the environment so whenever a person is going and coming in contact with the infected material such as dust or grass or any kind of dirt so whenever his hand is contaminating if he brings that hand without proper washing towards his mouth or if he keeps his hand in his mouth then there are more chances of transferring of the disease it means this larval stages of the tape form are coming and transferring into the man and also directly from the dog hair to uh, to hand means whenever a person is playing with the dogs so if the dog hair is contaminated with this uh, larval stages so if you are keeping your hand near your mouth unfortunately there will be chances of entry of the larval stage into the human being so coming to the larval stage of this echinococcus granulosus so, we will see here, it is mainly having two types of hosts. It is having an definitive host and it is having an intermediate host. And it is also having a human being. So, how the dogs are getting infected? Whenever a dog is consuming the organs of an infected sheep, it is resulting in the infection of the dog. So, mainly the organs of the sheep which, which containing these cysts, these are ingested by the dog. So, in the dogs, the cyst, it, it will uh, it will form as it, the organism will come and it will grow in the small intestine and it will develop the eggs there. So, these eggs are again coming out in the form of feces. So, from the feces, these eggs are again ejected out. So, whenever a sheep and healthy sheep is going and feeding in the grasslands, if that feces are coming in contact by any means, by means of grass or by means of direct touch, so it is resulting in the ingestion of larval stages into the sheep again. So, how a man is getting affected here? Whenever he is consuming the meat of a sheep or whenever he is consuming, uh, whenever he is playing with the dogs. So, the dog hair is affected here. If you see the previous slide, uh, the dog hair is affected here 
and it is directly coming from the dust grass and even the dirt also so like this the man is getting affected so whatever the embryonic pieces which are present in the environment which had been come from these dogs these are infecting the human beings also so the human being he is injecting the embryonated egg feces so these feces they will penetrate into the intestinal wall and they will hatch there means they will settle down there so from the intestinal walls they will reach into several organs means they can reach to the lungs they can reach to the bones they can reach to the small intestines they even even reach into the brain also and what they are forming they are forming the hydrated cyst that is present in the various organs so you can see here so even in the in case of the sheep also the same thing is happening here so whenever uh, the the hydrated cyst is being formed it is result, resulting in the, into proctoscolic form of the cyst again this proctoscolic form of the cyst it is developing into scolex and it is attaching to the intestine again from the intestine it is growing in the small intestine again from the feces it is getting shedded down and this is how the life cycle will repeat so the same picture which is in uh, different form here so what are all the clinical manifestations that you can see means so major type of cyst they do not produce any kinds of signs and symptoms but the the clinical features that they, they depends upon the organ and site where they have involved so they this mainly depending upon the organs which were involved if it is in the brain you can observe the neurological symptoms if you see it in the liver you can observe the hepatic symptoms if it is in the lungs you can observe the respiratory symptoms so the site of organ involved the site of cyst development stage of the cyst development and viability of the cyst contains so these are the factors which are manipulating the clinical manifestation so symptoms of the disease they are mainly relating to related to expanding the mass pressure on the adjacent structures and rupture of the cyst contains into the surrounding body cavity so it is mainly depending upon the see when a cyst is growing so if you see in this picture here if a cyst is going near the lung so if a cyst is growing near the lung the adjacent structures which are present the diaphragm and the heart so they are facing some functional disability because of the lack of space there lack of space so mainly you can observe the cardiac symptoms because of the surrounding structure uh, it is getting affected and you can see the respiratory symptoms see if it is occurring in the liver see other adjacent structures are getting uh, disturbance and if it is coming in the small intestine you can observe some uh, small bowel obstructions all this type of symptoms so it is mainly depending upon the site of the organ which is involved and the stage of the cyst development and what is the viability of the cyst contains so uh, an uncomplicated liver cyst it is usually present with dull ache in the right upper quadrant or feeling of abdominal pain or distension so if a cyst is present in the liver so it is giving a dull ache and uh, it is coming that pain is coming in the right upper quadrant and you can feel the abdominal pain and also the distension also so whenever you are clinically examining the liver you can find out the enlarged liver which is having the round dead mass and it is whenever you are palpating you can feel it on the surface the next thing is you can observe a large cyst in the hilar region so um, it can compress the common hepatic duct cholestasis the next thing is hepatic vein so hepatic vein compression or inferior vena cava com compression it can build bud carrier syndrome so as i said it is mainly depending upon the site of the cyst and the organs which were involved and the if and the infected hyoid cyst it has the clinical features of liver abscess so present symptoms of the large cyst which are present in the lungs so if the cyst is present in the lungs you can observe the cough you can observe hemoptysis nothing but bleeding from the mouth and you can observe chest pain and you can observe the dyspnea and the next thing rupture of the cyst it contains uh, rupture of the cyst contains and next thing rupture of the cyst contains into the pleural cavity it may cause the allergic reactions which inclu which includes the anaphylaxis you can, it can result in the pleural effusion it can result in the pleural implantation and sometimes emphysema also so these are the uh, these are the symptoms which were related to the uh, cyst which is present in the lungs so uh, involvement of the other organs so if it is uh, you can observe the soft tissue flocculent swelling if it if the muscle cyst is involved if the cyst is present in the muscle and you can observe the raised intracranial pressure and focal epilepsy if the cysts are present in the cerebrum 
you can observe the segmental portal hypertension if the cyst is present in this spleen you can observe acute pancreatitis and even also you can observe jaundice and pancreatitis uh, you can observe acute pancreatitis and jaundice in case of the pancreatic cyst you can observe bone swelling you can observe bone pain and you can even see the pathological factors if the cyst is present in the bone pericardial effusion and per, uh, cardiac tamponade can be seen in case of the cardiac cyst loyal pain and hematuria can be seen in case of the kidney cyst in orbital cyst it will result in the unilateral exophthalmos and blindness so these are the organs which you can observe and these are the signs and symptoms which you can see depending upon the organ involved so how you can diagnose the disease so the disease is mainly diagnosed by serological investigations mri ultrasound and ct that nothing but computerized tomography so how to prevent and control this disease so mainly identification of the cases and treatment of the cases the early identification the early treatment and the complications which is related to the disease can be prevented so the disease the cases having high dated should they must be investigated and their treatment should be given in a proper and required manner coming to the drug of choice here so what is the drug of choice we are giving the albendazole which is given in the form of 10 to 15 mg per kg body weight and the course will be like 3 to 1 month course so it has an interval of 14 days so if you see the recent studies so what they have studied is if the, if they are treating the person for 3 to 6 months without uh, interruption so there was a better result and there was no side effects or any kind of adverse effects which had been observed and in case of the absence of this albendazole the other drugs such as mebendazole and paranjecvital these drugs can be used so if a person is infected with this hepatic hydrated cyst so there is a treatment option which is called as pyrotechnic so what they are doing in this pyrotechnic means they are mainly puncturing means they are mainly doing the puncture aspiration and they are installing the scolicidal agents so mainly they, they can be used for percutaneous drainage of the hepatic hydrated cyst so whenever a person is affected with this hepatic hydrated cyst the pair technique is used to treat that persons and if you see it is the only treatment it is the treatment of choice for these patients who are having this hepatic hydrated cyst and the persons who are refusing surgery or any have having any comorbid disease the treatment of option for this hydrated disease it is the only surgery only surgery they can do and surgery it has the highest potential to remove the cyst and you, you the persons can be completely cured in case of the surgery here so the next thing coming to the next thing deworming of the all dog so if a dog has eaten an uncooked sheep inter internal organs so, so these dogs they should be taken to the hospital and they should be dewormed so disposal of dead sheep and dead uh, sheep viscera so if the sheep or the uh, sheep viscera are contaminated they should be disposed in a proper way they should not be thrown in the outer environment the dog should not eat them they should be thrown away from the environment so that these dogs are being safe and we are being safe proper disposal of this uh, dead sheep and sheep viscera must be followed eliminate the stray dogs so the stray dogs they should be eliminated from the community and you should make sure that these dogs they should not defecate around the children playing areas hand washing so it is the first and foremost thing that we can do as there is a slogan prevention is better than cure instead of taking treatment of the you got affected with this disease if you are following the precautions the disease itself can be prevented and you can stay safe that's it for today thank you so much thanks for watching if you like the content please like share and subscribe the channel if you have any queries you can drop it down in the comments thank you so much